Have you ever thought about the significance of your name or does your name carry significance? You know, when my wife and I, we named our, our three daughters, we wanted to give them a name that carried significance. So we named our oldest daughter, Hallie. We named her Hallie, the first five letters of hallelujah. So her name means praise. Or we named our middle child, Ellie. We call her Ellie, but her name is Elliot. It's a variation of Elijah, which means Yahweh is God. Or our youngest daughter, we named her Adlai. It's, it's a biblical name, not, not too common, but it means God is just and fair. We wanted to give them biblical and significant names. You know, in biblical theology, it was always important to name a child with significance, either based on a characteristic that they had or something that they were supposed to fulfill in their life. I think one of the funniest stories in all of Scripture actually happens in the book of Genesis. Maybe you've heard of the story of, of Isaac and Rebekah, and Rebekah's pregnant with these two twins in her belly. And the first twin comes out, the oldest one, and they feel this child, and he feels hairy. And so they give him the name Esau, which means, well, it means hairy. <laughs> And Jacob, his, his younger brother, he comes out of the womb and he's seen actually grasping the heel of his older brother. And so they name him Jacob, which means heel grabber. Now that's just an expression of somebody who, who trips up somebody else. And we know later in Jacob's life that he would do just that before he has this amazing encounter with God. But maybe one of the most significant names given to anybody throughout all of Scripture is found in Matthew chapter 1. It's a name given to Jesus. Notice what Matthew says about the birth of Jesus and a name that's going to be given to him. In Matthew chapter 1, it says, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Why is this name so significant? And why is this the name in the early chapters of Matthew that's given to Jesus? Well, many scholars talk about what's known as the silent period, the time of Malachi, which is the last Old Testament prophet, to the time of John the Baptist and Jesus. It, it was known as the silent years. It was 400 years. It's not because God wasn't acting during this time, but there was no canonical books written, no no biblical books. Also, there weren't really any prophets during this time. So the time that John and Jesus come onto the scene, it's God sort of breaking into history in such an amazing way. It's God himself in the person of Jesus coming and visiting his people. But I think the story gets better because Jesus he, he lives his earthly life. He has his ministry. And following his death, burial, and resurrection, he gathers his disciples around him. And he says something really significant to them. Notice what he says at the end of Matthew. It's Matthew 28. Most of us who have been in church for a while have heard the words, the Great Commission. And if you haven't been in church, that's okay. The Great Commission is the final words in Matthew's gospel that Jesus gives to his disciples. And he says, go into all the world and make disciples, teaching them, baptizing them, teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you. And then he says this phrase, and I will be with you Till the very end of the age. So we see at the beginning of Matthew's gospel, it's God visiting his people in the person of Jesus, Emmanuel. And at the end of Matthew's gospel, it's Jesus saying, I haven't only come to visit you, but I'm going to be with you always. Throughout the Bible, we know that it's God who tells his people, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But at the end of Matthew's gospel, it's actually Jesus saying, in a sense, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Matthew conflates the two. They're, they're one and the same. So what kind of situation are you facing in life right now? Maybe, maybe it's the COVID situation. Maybe you're out of a job. Maybe your situation is you find yourself in continual conflict in your marriage. Or maybe you have a, a child in your life that's caused a lot of heartache for you. I don't know what the situation that you find yourself in, but I want you to know this, that no matter what situation you're in, God is with you. And that gives us great comfort and great reason to rejoice. So until we're able to come back together again, go with God. God bless you.